Okay, this is uh, slide four on forced reconstruction. Um, we'll start with um, uh, an act here passed by Congress um, in March of 1867 known as the Reconstruction Acts. Uh, and the Reconstruction Acts divided the South into five military districts. Uh, and if you see the map up here in the top left corner, there you see the five districts. Uh, Virginia had a district all by itself. Uh, North and South Carolina uh, were in a district. Alabama, Georgia, and Florida were in one. Arkansas and Mississippi in one. And then Texas and Louisiana. So those are the five military districts. The South is divided into these districts. Okay? Each district was controlled by a Union general um, and were policed by federal soldiers. This is called martial law. When the military is in charge uh, of law and order, it's called martial law. Uh, and that's what was going on here. Federal troops were in the South to protect these newly created black citizens. Okay? Uh, as you can imagine, white Southerners were not real thrilled with these new citizens um, and the government standing up for the rights of blacks. So the federal government sends federal troops, U.S. Army soldiers, are sent into the South to maintain law and order. Now you'll notice on the map here, one state that you would expect to be um, part of one of these districts is not Tennessee. Uh, and that is because Tennessee had ratified the 14th Amendment to agree to make black citizens, give them the right to vote. Um, all of the things the 14th Amendment said Tennessee had agreed to. Uh, this had to be particularly embarrassing for President Johnson, as that is his home state. But uh, since Tennessee has done all of that, they've re-elected uh, a new government, there is no need for a uh, military uh, presence there. There's no need for a union general to be the governor. They have a governor, fairly elected, uh, black, by black voters. However, the rest of the South uh, is under martial law here. Right? Now, um, the Reconstruction Acts... Right, also removed the right to vote from tens of thousands of former Confederates, those who had served, uh, been officers in the army or served before, uh, wealthy plantation owners, they were not allowed to vote. Okay? Um, and the southern states were required to ratify the 14th Amendment and guarantee blacks the right to vote, black men at least, before they could come back in. So ratifying the 14th Amendment okay, becomes the determining factor as to whether a southern state gets back in. And once, again, the map here, once these southern states have ratified the 14th, each one individually, uh, they've elected a new government, there'll be no need for the troops and they'll be removed. Okay? So ratifying the 14th uh, Amendment here is the determining factor as to whether states get back in um, or not. Okay? Now, the worry was that as soon as states got back in, okay, um, they would change their state constitutions to remove black voting. So, how did we make sure all of the 14th Amendment stuff didn't get taken out of Congress? We turned it into amendment. Same thing with the uh, right to vote for blacks. We're going to turn it into an amendment. The 15th Amendment uh, was passed by Congress and then ratified by the required number of states in 1870. And the 15th Amendment grants voting to blacks. In fact, it says all um, men, men still, born in the United States, other than Native Americans, not yet, um, will be given the right to vote. But for our purposes of our discussion here. Um, this will give voting to blacks, black suffrage, the right to vote, the 15th Amendment. So now we have the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments 
uh, added to the Constitution during this time. Together, these are sometimes called the Reconstruction Amendments because they come in during Reconstruction. So, uh, 13th Amendment in slavery, 14th Amendment gives blacks citizenship, 15th Amendment gives blacks the right to vote. Uh, I can promise you, you will see those again. You will need to know those. Right? Now that we have all these new black voters, right, um, somebody has to teach them how to vote. And that's where a new organization called the Union League comes into existence. Uh, the Union League was founded to educate blacks on voting, to teach them what the issues are, um, how to go vote, what you're going to have to do when you get to your polling place and all that, because blacks had never voted before. This was all brand new. Uh, the Union League was set up to educate blacks about voting. Uh, here you see a picture of uh, the, the, the new Union League house in Philadelphia. They're all over the country. Uh, because an amendment to the Constitution, black voting, affects blacks everywhere, not just in the South. Blacks everywhere are going to be voting. Um, so union leagues started popping up all over the country. Now, not only did they teach blacks about voting and about issues, they also campaigned for who to vote for. Um, this is the Republican Congress making all this happen uh, to help blacks. So the Union League is going to turn into a big campaign tool for Republicans. It's going to tell blacks, here's how you go vote. And by the way, while you're there, you might want to vote for this Republican guy. Right? Um, they also built churches. They built schools. Uh, they represented blacks in legal cases. If a black man needed a lawyer, the Union League would get him one. Um, but mainly, they sat down to help blacks learn about voting. And since we're going to have now black men voting, we're going to end up getting black congressmen elected. Okay? It is during Reconstruction that we will see our first black congressmen. Okay? The first two um, are congressmen from the state of Mississippi, U.S. senators from Mississippi. Um, Hiram Revels, R-E-V-E-L-S, uh, and Blanche Bruce. Usually last names are all you need to worry about, okay? I'll tell you if there's a specific first name you're going to need to know. I'll tell you what they are, but uh, for test purposes and such, last names are really where you're going to need to know. Uh, but anyway, Hiram Revels and Blanche Bruce become the first black congressmen elected. They're senators from the state of Mississippi. Okay? So, congratulations to them. All right, to uh, finish up here, there's two groups of people we need to talk about. Okay? First are carpetbaggers. Okay? Carpetbaggers. These are northerners who go south looking for government jobs. As new state governments get elected in the south, they're not going to put southerners into government jobs. They want to uh, help blacks, so they're going to put northerners in those jobs. The northerners who go south looking for government work are called carpetbaggers. Okay? These aren't rich people. If you're rich in the north, you're not going to give up everything you have and go work for the government in the south. These are usually poor northerners, middle class northerners maybe, um, who are looking for a better job. So they pack up everything they have um, into these old suitcases made of carpet scraps. That's why they're known as carpetbaggers. They carry their belongings in a bag made out of carpet, okay? uh, and they head south to take government jobs and essentially tell the Southerners how to live their lives. Uh, you can imagine they are not going to be, shall we say, welcomed uh, or well-received in the South. Okay? Um, a second group here known as Scalawags. Okay? Scalawags are Southerners white Southerners, let's clarify that, white Southerners who supported the Northern changes. Okay? White Southerners that supported the Northern changes. Now, these are typically businessmen, white Southern businessmen. And businessmen, what they want more than anything else is money. They want to make money. Well, the problem is the economy in the South is horrible. And the only way they're going to start making money is if people get jobs and start making money and spending it. 
And the only way that's going to happen is if the North is allowed to come in and help rebuild. But they can't come in and help rebuild until the South is officially part of the country again. So we got to get them back in. Scalawags are white Southerners that support what the North's doing, trying to rebuild the South, maybe even help blacks. Maybe not. But really, these are businessmen that are just anxious to get on with their lives. Um, Scalawags are not well received in the South either, as you can imagine. Um, of the two carpetbaggers and scalawags, who do you think is worse? Think about it. In the mind of a typical Southerner, who would be worse, a carpetbagger or a scalawag? If you say carpetbagger, you're eh, wrong. Sorry. In the mind of a typical Southerner, a scalawag is much worse than a carpetbagger. A carpetbagger is a northerner who comes south to take government jobs, right? You expect northerners to come down and screw you over at any given opportunity if you're a southerner. What you don't expect is one of your own to turn on you. Uh, scalawags, sorry, scalawags were seen as traitors to the south, betraying their own country. Okay? Notice the uh, little uh, political cartoon drawn here from a newspaper at the time. There you see a carpetbagger carrying his little Ohio carpet bag from Ohio. This would probably be a scalawag. Um, hanging from a tree. The KKK donkey walking out from underneath them, leaving them to hang to their death. We will talk about the rise of the Klan um, in our next slide. So, for now, I bid you farewell.